Geologic Maps Part 2A Construction of a section through a geologic map showing simple dipping pits. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The subject of this series deals with geologic maps. In part 1, an overview of geologic maps and structural features will be presented. In part 2, construction of geologic cross sections will be given. Four structural features have been considered simple dipping beds, a non conformity, a fold, and a fault. Systematic drawing of a geologic cross section. This figure shows a hypothetical geologic map in which six sedimentary rock units, A, to F with topographic contour lines. The map scale is 1 to 5000 and the contour interval is 100 meters. It is required to find, strike, through dip and draw a cross section along the line X, Y. Step 1. Since all points of a strike line have the same elevation, then to find the strike lines for the top or bottom of a bed that is to say, contact surface between any two successive beds, we need to find at least two points having the same elevation for that contact, join them by a straight line and find its direction. Thus, trace each of the contact surfaces between the beds, which appear as lines AB, BC, CD, DE, and EF and mark the points of intersection between each of the contacts and the contour lines, the small circles in the figure. Note, when the beds are horizontal, their contacts do not intersect the contour lines. They conform to each other. Step 2. Join each two or more points of the same elevation for the same boundary by a straight line. Right near one end of the strike lines, the symbols of the contact surfaces and their elevation values. For example, BC 300, AB 300, etc. Write the values of three strike lines for each boundary. If three values are not available, as in the case of contact AB, where one value is available, AB 300, and the contact BC, where two values are available, BC 300 and BC 400, for example, then, from the dip direction and the strike interval, deduce the required values of other strike lines. The two green strike lines, top left and bottom right corners, are drawn by inference. Each of them is added by drawing a line passing through the intersection between the contour line and the boundary, parallel to the other strike lines. Note that, if the thickness and dip of the beds are unchanging, the strike lines remain parallel and with equal spacing. Note also that when the difference in depth between any two parallel boundaries equals to or an integral multiple of the strike interval, then their strike lines projection on the horizontal plane coincide with each other. Thus, it appears as if a strike line takes multiple values, whereas in fact they are multi strike lines each at a certain level. However, their projection on the horizontal plane appears as one line. For example, the strike line AB300, BC200, though it appears as one, they are in fact two strike lines, one on top of the other, one at 200 meters level and the other at 300 meters level. Step 3. Find the direction of decreasing values of two or more successive strike lines of one boundary. This will determine the direction of dip. Erect an arrow perpendicular to one of the strike lines in the direction of dip. Step 4. Extend one of the strike lines to intersect the arrow of north direction and measure the angle. In this case, the strike is north 45 degrees east. The spacing between two successive strike lines on the map is 2.95 centimeters. Step 5. The value of true dip theta may be determined from equation 1. Tan theta equals strike interval 
over spacing times scale. This is equal to 100 over 2.95 times 1 over 50, which gives 0.678. Therefore, theta equals 34.1 degrees. Thus, the true dip is 34.1 degrees northwest. Step 6. Superimpose the edge of a strip of paper on the section line X, Y and mark the locations of the points X and Y. Mark the intersection points between the line of section and each of the strike lines and write three strike line values for each boundary. Superimpose the edge of another strip of paper on the section line and mark the locations of the points X and Y and the intersection points between the section line and the topographic contour lines together with their elevation values. Superimpose a third edge of strip of paper on the section line and mark the locations of the points X and Y and the intersection points between the boundaries and the section line. Step 7. On an ordinary graph paper, draw a line segment whose length equals that of the section XY. Then, erect two vertical lines from the two ends X and Y. The horizontal scale along XY will be same as that of the map. You can choose an appropriate vertical scale. Let it for this exercise be equals the horizontal scale. Put centimeter marks on the vertical scale 1 cm equals 50 meters. Put the strike line intersections strip of paper on the graph paper. For each boundary, erect vertical lines from its strike line marks with their heights corresponding to their elevations. Mark their ends, then join them by a straight line which will represent the boundary whose values were projected. Thus, starting from the boundary EF, project upward each of the three intersection points EF500, EF400, and EF300 according to their elevations. Mark their ends, then connect them with a straight line. That will represent the boundary EF. Note that two points are sufficient to draw a straight line. However, the third point is added for checking because if the three points do not fall on the same straight line, that means something wrong and you have to check your work. Repeat the above process to the other boundaries DE, CD, BC and AB as shown in the following set of figures. Put the edge of the second strip of paper on the section line and from each intersection point erect upward a vertical line whose height corresponds to its elevation value and mark its end. Superimpose the boundary intersection point strip of paper on the section line and from each boundary point erect upward a vertical line to cut the corresponding boundary. Step 8. Connect the surface elevation points to draw the profile line and make any necessary modification to ensure that the profile line passes through each of the boundary intersection points. Erase all the contact lines that lie above the earth's surface and any unnecessary vertical lines and points. Put the symbols, coloring and name of each bit as in the following set of figures and the section is done. This is the end of part 2a. Next, part 2b, construction of geologic cross-section through a map showing an unconformity. With my compliments. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.